Okay, this is Clinton Quarantino, or I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but he's made a lot of movies like Pulp Fiction and Django. Um, so he's talking a little bit about his career, and he's wearing his Jackie Brown hat. I guess this is gets him in the black club. And um, if you notice, his shirt. Looks like it almost says Illuminati something on it. But, um, he acts like he's, um, on something serious. And you can watch him kind of ease his way out of a lot of situations. Things in the last ten years might always turn them down. But you do two cameos in this film. Yeah, I do one, one because it was just easier to do. And the other one I did it basically because, uh, we kept moving the scene further, further back, and we kept losing actors because it was a scene that we're going to get around to. If I put myself in there and I have to cut it down to nothing, I have no problems with that. All right, if I have Sam Worthington waiting around for six months, I'm going to feel bad if I cut a scene down to nothing. All right, um, but uh, uh, I can cut me, no worries. Um, but the thing about it, though, is um, movies are hard. And if I'm going to be on a set, I want it to be my set. I don't want to be making somebody's dumb movie as an actor. I don't want to have to learn the lines. I don't want to have to sit in the makeup chair. I don't want people faxing schedules to me. I don't care about your dumb movie. I care about my dumb movie. <laughs> <laughs> but there must be people. I mean, I'm surprised you've never worked with Johnny Depp. Okay, this is right here where they go into the top actor who makes the most and how important it is to have him in your films and Quarantino plays homage to Johnny Depp as if he's top demon and he he gets himself in a little bit of a corner uh, when the interviewer kind of catches him on it you'll see I, we would love to work together we've talked about it for years we've talked about it for years not that we get together and talk but when he discusses um Jo Jamie Fox, it's not exactly so hyper, and he didn't really create a part for him. But for years, but even from time to time, and yeah. we're obviously fans of each other. Right, I, would I imagine that, but knowing both of them. Yeah, I just need to. Uh, it just needs to be the right character. I just need to write write the right character that I think Johnny would be the guy to do it with. Okay, so this is what he does for Johnny. Johnny gets the special white wealthy elite secret society privilege to have his parts written for him in mind. Now he lays it out right there, but then when that interviewer catches him, he he clear, cleans it up a little. And if he agrees, then we'll do it. And then it'll be magical. I mean, there is a reason that it takes time to find the... What? Magical as in Satanist magic. It's just, it's just, I, I haven't written, I haven't written the perfect character for Johnny Depp as of yet. Maybe someday I will. Maybe someday I will. We'll see. But okay, um, but let's talk about that because I mean, if you look at this character that Jamie, Jimmy Fox, uh, Jamie Fox plays, or I mean, was that? It wasn't written for him. No, 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 no. That's not the point. See, here's where he goes and has to clean it up because the black actors don't get their parts written for him. You just fill them in. Whoever is the best sellout to do it. But when Johnny's roles are created, it's with him in mind. But it fits him. Yeah, it fits him. Though. Now, I didn't say I have to write it for him, yeah. or Johnny Depp, or Jamie Foxx. But it really is a thing to me now that, uh, you know, aside from somebody like Christopher Sandwich, you know, I'm, not, I'm obviously contradicting myself. I obviously am looking shows for show for uh, uh, Christoph Waltz. Right. But for the most part... <laughs> See, he even knows he contradicts himself. If I, you know, don't have Joe Namath and Jim Brown in my back pocket. <laughs> uh, you don't have a nigger on the side. It's, it's yeah. an interesting reference. <laughs> if I don't have that, uh, I want to write the character. And I don't want to think about anything as far as any, an actor's uh, 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 pluses or limitations as far as that character is concerned. I want that character. It's what I'm here to do. I'm here to create these characters that come out of this deep DNA of my tissue. And I only got one, one crack at it. The 
I'm not writing theater that people were going to do, be doing this every 20 years. Uh, maybe someday it will, but not right now. And uh, so I write that character, and then nothing is more important than just finding the perfect actor. But when that actor, when that character is perfect, like in the case of Leonardo here, or maybe Johnny Depp someday, or somebody else, it's like... Notice how he leaves out Jamie Foxx. The reason why there's an excitement when they come together, because it is magic. Who else might there be on that? And notice how he did the Illuminati sign. Watch him. He says it's magic when we all get together, and then he puts up the Illuminati sign. It's magic. Who else might there be on that? Watch. When they come together, because it is magic. Who else might there be? There's a reason why there's an excitement. Can't watch him. Can't see. It's kind of dark. Uh -huh. Here we go. Who else might you see that? Sure. He did the pyramid sign. Oh, people I would like to work yeah. with. Uh, uh, I'd love to work with Michael Caine. I've always been a huge Michael Caine fan. I think, he, I think he's absolutely Only true. white actors. And uh, I'd really love to work with Meryl Streep. I'm a huge, huge fan. I actually think we would get along like a house on fire, even though I don't really know her. No, we would get along. So let me close with this. Um, so somebody would come up and promise and uh, the gusto and passion uh, that he just talked about, which is you, comes to you, and, and let's say they made some small film that you think of. This is where he's trying to get him to admit, you know, but he's showing the Illuminati sign, letting him know, like, hey, if they do try to get in, they're not going to, because if they're not a part of the secret society, we're not going to let them in. Talent doesn't exist in Hollywood anymore. It's just about favoritism, nepotism, um, sexual harassment, sexual favors, um, devil worship, satanic rituals. It's not even about talent. Yeah, notice he didn't say how he helps other people struggle in trying to become directors. That he has a protege or anything. Because they don't want to pass on the knowledge. They want to keep it all to their selves. And this shirt is really creepy because it almost looks like Illuminati Joker. See how it looks like it's I L L M A and then it's gonna spill it out and then on the bottom it's O K E R. So he's saying the Illuminati is gonna end up being the Joker. Concerned. It would have to be much closer to uh, 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 something much more specific. I mean, he, it, he almost comes off a bit homosexual, and I wouldn't doubt if he wasn't. I wonder, does he have a wife or a mate that he's known with being for? Because I'm almost positive he doesn't. And if it is, it's probably a male. If I actually was going to try to uh, see their strengths or something, maybe I would ask them how they work with actors. What would, if I liked the movie, how did, you, how did that work out? How did you do it? And they would tell me their way. And if I thought that there was a... And then for him to wear gray and black... To sort of be mocking me on the side, knowing that I'm only wearing gray until I get a job. Until I get my director job. So now the latest color for all the Hollywood directors to sport is gray. So that it's a sort of flaunt in your face. Ha ha. You can't be one of us. A deeper level that they could get. And uh, then I might uh, take them in that way. Can you imagine making a movie from a script by someone else. I can imagine it. Uh, is it likely? No. He doesn't have to. Not really. uh, no, I don't really think it is. I mean, never say never. Uh, and who knows, maybe it might be one of those things where, like, six years from now, that might actually be the creative thing to do. Yeah, to, you know, to yeah we'll see somebody. where you're going to be. Somebody might have done something that is so good, it's irresistible. That's true, but, you know, gosh, if it's that 
good, then somebody else could do it too, you know, and the world wouldn't be robbed of it. The reason I, the reason I, I think that's less likely is because I kind of feel I was put here to take those blank pages and fill them up. Exactly. Yeah, so this is but notice he was here to fill up blank pages, but not to lead people to Jesus or make Christian films or anything, a film with God or Jesus in it. Okay. So really your assignment is really trash. My last question. Because the any one of your films, you can't even say you led anyone to Christ. Totally. They didn't make much of a difference. They didn't change anyone's life and make them get to heaven. So to me, psh, they're a waste of film and money. Film that comes out of like Django, like Pulp Fiction, like Jackie Brown, like Inglorious Bastards. Um, Jackie Brown movies are good. I have to give him that. Does the screenwriting weigh and own a hundred pounds as the <clears throat> complete weight? Quentin is known as the closest to the black white director you can get. He's sort of gotten his way in with. Um, and gotten a black card. So he um, is one of the ones who's less prejudiced, I would have to say, out of all the directors. He um, has more diversity in his films. I have to give him that. Is it 30 pounds? Is it 50 pounds? Is it a stupid question? No, it's not a stupid question. I have to stop this because I know they won't let me download it. But there'll probably be a part two.